You want to hear an unpopular opinion? No, of course not. This is the freaking internet. Frost Relay is objectively one of the worst program moves in any game ever. It has contributed to many people just like you thinking it is a garbage skill in Bug Fables. Possibly even the worst move in the game. It's because the move is about as functional as a 102-year-old spider, and it definitely has led to its fair share of confusion. So if you felt this move was a complete and utter mess, you're not alone. Nor are you really wrong. At that point, just stick to Ice Rain. With that said, it's also my favorite move in the game. It's strong, technical, and makes mix me of bosses with low defense. But that opinion of Frost Relay is unpopular for a reason. Because no one really understands this move. In addition to this move being poorly programmed, how it works is just straight up weird. Actually, no. To call Frost Relay weird would be an understatement. Where you find it is obscure, the items to learn to move are obscure, and how this move works in general is... Well, you get the idea. When using the skill to do damage, it takes the base attack power of the two attackers, V and Leaf to alternate between freezing the target and striking them with V's Beamerang. This move does not account for elemental weakness, so being weak to ice does not increase the damage you deal at all. The damage sequentially decreases the more times it hits. You might think then that to get the maximum damage possible, you have to land all 12 hits successfully. If you did think that, you're wrong. No, what you should do is aim for only the first 11 button prompts to maximize your damage. Failing the 12th hit, however, V will do an additional point of damage over what she would have done instead. This is just one of many oddities to do with Frost Relay, Buck Fable's most broken move. When using Frost Relay, the initiator's position for the move affects the damage for both users. It isn't enough for an attacker to be in the front of the party, but they have to be the one to choose the action as well. Both Leaf and V will have increased attack power if the bug in front uses the skill. This can be the difference between dealing 19 damage and a poultry 7 total, which in a game like Bug Fables the Everlasting Sapling matters a lot with numbers this small. And speaking of damage, this really has no easy method to break down, but I will try my best to explain. The attack power of the bug executing the move benefits your ally the higher it is. And it doesn't only mean you do more damage total, it actually increases your partner's damage too. So naturally, it means that the higher the user's attack set is, the stronger it makes your ally, right? Well, no. You see, there are multiple methods of increasing your attack stat. And towards the end of the video, you'll find out how all of them affect Frost Relay differently. In order of usefulness, I would say that last attack is your best friend. The reason why is because last attack's extra one attack point per metal equipped affects every hit of Frost Relay, not just the first hit. And when I say every, I mean every hit. If, for example, Leaf while in the front equips two last attack medals and uses Frost Relay with an HP set of 4 or less, as the move is being carried out, meaning life cast immediately triggers the medals, his starting attack power will go up from 3 to 5. This extra attack power, however, is unique in the sense that it also increases V's base damage to 5. The damage will still go down one point at a time, but the number will never go below 3. Meaning at worst, you're doing a whopping 43 damage as opposed to 19. More than double of Outlast attack. Even if you saddle Leaf with two Defense Exchange Medals, EXP Booster, and positioned him in the back, two Last Attack Medals will still make both V and Leaf do a minimum of two damage against every enemy with zero defense. Another viable option to increase attack power but not quite as good as last attack is Poison Attacker. The Poison bug with this equipped will have a higher initial attack stat, and the damage stops dropping early, much like with last attack. However, this is a worse option than the former, because Poison Attacker affects only the bug equipping it, with the ally's attack power being entirely unaffected. This means that yes, it does have less of an effect than your overall damage output, but you can argue that it is a safer option than Last Attack is. Namely because Poison Attacker just demands your poison, while Last Attack demands you're at low HP. And if one user of Frost Relay falls, then neither can use the move. Lower on the totem pole of enhancements is the Empower status. This just straight up increases the power of each hit by one per hit. There is no real drawback, but Empower once again affects only the bug with the status, not the ally. It's worse than last attack, because unless you're investing in methods to empower both attackers, only one will truly benefit from it. And it's worse than poison attacker, because the floor for damage to fall to is lower. Empower, however, isn't entirely outclassed either. Since this is a status, not necessarily a metal, there are multiple ways to activate it. Leaf skills, certain items, royal decree, and they don't have to call for MP being used up either. 
and worst case, it is still a significantly better option to use Frost really alongside than the last three options that still increase your attack stat. The next two I want to talk about at the same time, Power Exchange and Super Peppers. Both of these increase the initial hit of the attacker, and the damage will likewise proceed to drop by one per hit. However, unlike any of the previous options, the floor for damage falls as low as one. So eventually, you will find yourself doing almost no damage per strike if you have no other buffs to your attack stat. But believe it or not, at least those two have the damage gradually drop by one per hit. The same cannot be said for charge up status. Charge Up exhausts all of the extra power on the first strike, with every subsequent hit being treated as if the charge was never applied. As such, you should never be using the status with Frost Relay. Though surprisingly, skills like Ice Rain, Hurricane Toss, and Understrike don't share this property. So when you use Frost Relay, keep that in mind. Now not everything I said applies if you focus your metals or extra attack power on the ally of a user of Frost Relay. If they have increased attack power whether through Power Exchange or Super Peppers, the damage they do skills accordingly as if it was on the user of the move. Charge status also works as expected with the first hit being buffed with the next hits not being affected at all. But Poison Attacker and Last Attack, meanwhile, have absolutely no effect on the allied Bug of Frost Relay. So in a strange way, the Totem Pole is basically turned on its head, which is probably why to compensate, when both Last Attack and Poison Attack are used alongside each other, they both add to the floor of the user of Frost Relay. Essentially, if both Last Attacks and Poison Attackers run V, for example, and she starts to move up, the damage starts at 7, but doesn't go below 5. Now the metal effects don't synchronize, so your ally doesn't mirror the user's damage, but it also means you're generally free to mix and match whatever metals you see fit with each other. And then there's Berserker, which starts off as you'd expect, where the first attack does 6 damage, then it goes down to 5, and then 4, soon after 3, and the next hit is 2- Wait, wait, okay, why did it do only 1- Uh. Yeah, clearly Bug Fables doesn't know its own damage calculation. So take my advice, don't listen to this game and listen to me instead. STILL ALIVE! So I have no idea why this is the case, but if either Leaf or V have three more attack than their base should be in the game, i.e. it's at least five, their fifth hit from Frost really would do two less damage, not one less. Yeah, if you were to ask me why the heck Bug Fables nerfs your Power Exchange and Super Peppers, but not your Last Attack or Poison Attackers, I have no freaking idea. But it does. Safe to say, this move is confusing. But the more you know your options, the better equipped you are for battle. That being said, there's a lot more to combat in Bug Fables than just Frost Relay. And you can learn all about that on the video you see on the screen right now. Be sure to watch that video next, and I promise you, you'll become a master in no time.